I commonly get asked about supplements. What do I take and what do I recommend? So in today's video, I'm going to share with you my favorite supplements. So let's get into it. Hi, my name is Tasvina Pavlou and I'm the founder of Pieces Oracle, where I talk about all things Peace West and how to reverse it naturally. So if that's what you're looking for, then consider subscribing and turn on the notification bell to be notified when I upload a new video. So supplements. Let's delve into what my favourite supplements are. Quick disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, so when it comes to supplements, don't make sure that you consult a medical professional before including a new supplement into your diet. Without further ado, let's delve into some of these favourite supplements of mine. Number one is gelatin slash collagen. Gelatin is the cooked form of collagen. The reason I use collagen and gelatin is because it contains anti-inflammatory amino acids. Muscle meat tend to contain inflammatory amino acids, including they include high amounts of tryptophan, methionine, and histidine. So by adding in some gelatin or collagen into your meals, for example, if you cook, for example, when I cook burgers, for example, I add in some gelatin um, into the mixture to help balance out the balance, help balance out the amino acid profile. Some benefits of including gelatin into your diet include improved digestion, decreased joint inflammation, improved sleep, increased insulin sensitivity, improved allergies, improved memory, improved liver detoxification, improves the skin, hair and nails. It helps improve, it helps arthritis, diabetes, it helps to stabilize blood sugar, and it helps to improve wound healing. The brand of supplement that I personally use for collagen and gelatin is Saturate. Um, I'll have the links and the discount codes to all of the products, um, to all of the supplements that I've been using for several months to years now um, in the description box down below. The second supplement on the list is Magnesium. Magnesium is involved in 300 enzymatic reactions including muscle and nerve function, blood glucose control, and blood pressure regulation and it's needed for energy production. So as you can see magnesium is needed for very important functions in the body but unfortunately stress depletes magnesium and as many of us are living in a chronic state of stress we need to therefore be replenishing the lost magnesium. The greater our stress the more that magnesium stores are depleted and this is known as the magnesium burn rate. A low magnesium level can cause energy depletion that leads to fatigue and the weakening of your ability to manage stress. So some of those benefits of magnesium include research reveals that magnesium has anti-thrombotic effects. Um, lower serum magnesium is associated with increased thrombotic risk. A deficiency of either calcium or magnesium can stimulate the parathyroid glands to produce more hormone, parathyroid hormone PTH which increases calcium absorption, but also removes calcium from the bones. Chronic stress depletes the body of magnesium, and research shows the higher the magnesium, the lower the cortisol. The recommended amount of magnesium is 5 mg per pound of body weight, but it's also important to recognise, take into consideration the magnesium burn rate. When in those greater periods of stress, then you're going to, you're going to need more magnesium to help replenish those lost stores. Now the magnesium I personally use is the magnesium oil by Ancient Minerals. So I personally use a topical form of magnesium as I feel it's more absorbable in the body. I often take a couple of sprays um, at night on my feet and it really helps you fall asleep, keeps you relaxed and also just spraying in areas where you feel some pain um, does really tend to, I do notice some improvement um, so test that out, it's really helpful. The third supplement is cod liver oil. Now, the reason why I take cod liver oil is because it's a great source of vitamin A and vitamin D. I highly recommend reading Molly Robbins's Cure Your Fatigue book. He delves into exactly why not to supplement with vitamin D, um, because vitamin D isn't actually vitamin, it's actually a hormone. But he goes into detail about vitamin D, just a uh, I'm just going to read out a quote from the book here in Molly Robinson's is Cure Your Fatigue about vitamin D. He says, 
Although vitamin D is commonly recommended to prevent and reverse chronic inflammation, studies do not demonstrate that vitamin D does this. In fact, the evidence suggests just the opposite. Low storage D status is solely an indication that there is inflammation in the body due solely to high unbound iron and low magnesium. He says that you can ingest buckets of supplemental D and never correct the underlying inflammation caused by the mineral dynamics of excess iron in the tissues and subsequent loss of magnesium inside the cell. So essentially, instead of supplementing with vitamin D, we should be correcting all the other mineral issues inside of our body, including addressing magnesium, because often it's the case of low magnesium that's affecting vitamin D levels, as well as iron overload. So by addressing, by increasing magnesium levels and by lowering iron in the body, we are able to restore some, restore vitamin D levels. So to get my vitamin A and vitamin D, I consume cod liver oil. Cod liver oil is a natural source of vitamin A in the form of retinol, which is what we want, which is crucial for activating bioavailable copper. Now the cod liver oil brand that I use is Rosita. Rosita do not use any pressure or metal containers or treatment in the Rosita method, which is very important. These oils are very delicate and must not be heated, extracted through pressure or exposed to air or metal in the process. The fish and extraction process receives special treatment with each liver inspected and only the best chosen and placed in a dark, oxygen-free environment. The oil is naturally released when the cod livers are exposed to temperatures slightly higher than the ocean. Some of the benefits of taking cod liver oil, the highly improved sleep quality, the vitamin A can help with eye health and vision, the vitamin D can help with skin and hair health, your immunity, vitamin D can also help maintain bone health. The fourth supplement is vitamin E. The reason why I take vitamin E is to prevent inflammation and because it's anti-estrogen. Now I'm going to pull up a research article by Dr. Ray Pete um, and highlight some of these reasons why I take vitamin E. So some research described vitamin E as a progesterone sparing agent since so many of its anti-estrogenic effects resemble those of progesterone. Estrogen causes changes in the uterus that prevent implantation of the embryo and that impair support for its development if it has already implanted. It decreases the availability of oxygen to the embryo while vitamin E increases it. Dr. Ray P explains that in his experiments, vitamin E increased the amount of oxygen in the uterus, correcting an oxygen deficiency produced either by supplemental estrogen or by old age. Progesterone has similar effects on the delivery of oxygen to the uterus. Many of the events involved in inflammation are increased by estrogen and decreased by vitamin E. Estrogen causes capillaries to become leaky, vitamin E does the opposite. Estrogen increases platelet aggregation and decreases a factor that inhibits platelet aggregation, vitamin E does the opposite. Excess clotting is known to be caused by too much estrogen and also by a vitamin E deficiency. Clotting leads to fibrosis and there is a clear evidence that vitamin E prevents and cures fibrotic diseases. Estrogen increases prostaglandin synthesis, vitamin E decreases synthesis. If, now, if you've been following the YouTube channel for a while and you've watched numerous, numerous of my videos, you may have come across that I've been saying to avoid consuming polyunsaturated fats, PUFAs. Of course, it's difficult to completely avoid all polyunsaturated fats, especially if you go out, or um, it's gonna be in small amounts in various things. Um, and also, if you're trying to, I guess, eliminate those polyunsaturated fats that are found in your tissues, um, vitamin E can act as, can protect the body against poly polyunsaturated fats. And um, obviously, swapping out those PUFAs for saturated fats can obviously take out those stored PUFAs from the tissues. Dr. Ray P explains that vitamin E inhibits lipolysis, lowering the concentration of free fatty acids the opposite of estrogen's effect, and it also binds to and it inactivates free fatty acids. Since the requirement for vitamin E decreases as the consumption of unsaturated fats decreases, the requirement, if any, would be very small if we didn't eat significant quantities of those fats. Finally, many studies show that vitamin E can protect and improve mitochondrial energy production. Now, I previously mentioned that our, bodies are in, our body is in a state of iron overload, and iron can deplete vitamin E absorption in the small intestine. So the vitamin E supplement I personally use is the unique E supplement by AC Grace Company. I have this linked in the description box down below as well as with all the other supplements. 
The fifth supplement is liver. Now, I personally enjoy cooking and eating liver in the actual form, but I know a lot of people may not enjoy eating liver. So the good thing is that there is desiccated liver now. You can get them in capsule form and just simply take them. There's no taste to it. So the reason why I eat liver and I suggest buying liver and having a liver supplement is because it's a great source of various vitamins and minerals. It's regarded as a nutritional powerhouse. Some of the nutrients in includes its vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K, folate, thiamine, B6, niacin, choline, and copious amounts of vitamin A and B12. It's a source of calcium, iron, magnesium, selenium, copper, zinc, and phosphorus. And I know for those of you that worried about, well, you know, you just said avoid iron in your diet. The copper found in the liver is higher and copper regulates iron. So that's not to be worried about. The supplement brand that I've been using, um, obviously I like to eat liver, but and the brand I use is Satura again, same as the collagen and the gelatin. Um, and this is Australian grass fed beef liver. So it's the ingredients are simply beef liver um, and bovine gelatin capsule. And this is just what it looks like for those of you wondering. So that's the capsule. Um, and the recommended sermon suggestion is add a lot to take four capsules uh, two times daily. The sixth supplement is methylene blue. Now this is something that I recently came across. It's been a few months that I've come across it. Um, and it's a very interesting um, supplement. It's been around for many, many years. Methylene blue was synthesized as a textile dye in the 1800s. So some of the benefits include that it's antimicrobial, um, so it can inhibit the growth of candida, it's antibacterial, it lowers cortisol, um, it enhances energy metabolism and improves mitochondrial function. It's an antidepressant, can help boost mental health, clarity, memory, mood, motivation and energy. There was a study that showed that uh, methylene blue can improve short-term memory. Methylene blue is a potent nitric oxide inhibitor. Nitric oxide is released in response to an inflammatory or other stressful stimuli and which has tons of negative effects. Methylene blue increases brain ATP production. It, it, it lowers TSH, thyroid hormone and increased T4. The methylene blue that I personally use is from Mitolab. They have information on methylene blue on their website, which I highly recommend checking out to find out more about methylene blue, how to use it, recommended dosage. Um, so I'll have that linked in the description box down below. The seventh supplement is vitamin C. As much as 95% of the body's stored vitamin C complex levels are found in the adrenal glands. So when we are stressed, vitamin C is depleted. Similarly with magnesium, these two nutrients have to be replenished. Um, replenish those lost stores. So it's important to be taking in plenty of whole food vitamin C, not ascorbic acid. <laughs> ascorbic acid is made from GMO corn, beets, tapioca or cassava. Molly Robbins explains why you shouldn't supplement with vitamin C um, with synthetic vitamin C in the form of ascorbic acid. In his book, Ascorbic Acid Destroys Beneficial probiotic bacteria in the human gut and can cause oxidative stress. Secondly, we need whole food vitamin C in order to create and form collagen in bones, cartilage and muscle. Thirdly, ascorbic acid causes ceruloplasmin to lose its peroxidase function that's essential to regulate and mobilize iron. So in order to be eliminating the iron from the body so it doesn't become overloaded in the tissues, to make, we make, need to make sure that we don't lose peroxidase. Examples of whole food vitamin C complex include camu camu, acerola cherry, rose hips, berry extract and cranberry. And that is all my favourite supplements. If you enjoy the video, please give it a like. If you take any of these supplements, let me know which ones you do in the comment section down below. As I mentioned, all of the links, all of the affiliate links and the discount codes um, will be in the description box down below. Um, if you purchase one of the products using the affiliate link, um, it does support the channel and I really appreciate it. Subscribe for more videos and I will catch you in the next one.